When you imagine the world's most famous spy on his newest adventure, there's a particular type of car that always comes to mind. Whether he's speeding through the glamorous streets of Monaco or navigating the rugged paths of Scotland, James Bond and his car go hand in hand. But which car is it exactly? Many say it's the DB5, claiming it's the most famous car globally because it's been by 007's side. But how did this iconic pairing come to be? Is it truly famous, or is it just popular because it appeared in a movie? According to Ian Fleming's novels, Bentley was James Bond's top pick when it came to cars. In books like Casino Royale, Live and Let Die, and Moonraker, a blower Bentley was Bond's right of choice. However, Tragedy struck in Moonraker when his beloved Bentley met its demise, leaving Bond in need of a new set of wheels. A fan's letter to Fleming suggested Aston Martin as a replacement, leading to the sleek DB5 making its debut in the book Goldfinger. The Aston Martin DB5 is a fancy British car made by Aston Martin and designed by an Italian company called Carrozzeria Touring Superleggera. It was first made between 1963 and 1965. The DB5 was like a newer version of the last DB4 model. The DB in its name comes from David Brown, who was the big boss of the company starting from 1947. There are some key differences between the DB4 series Fief and the DB5. The engine in the DB5 was made of aluminum, unlike the DB4. It was also bigger, going from 3.7 liters to 4.0 liters. They also put in a new ZF5 speed gearbox, which was tougher than the old one from David Brown, except for the very first DB5s. Plus, it had three SU carburetors. This engine could make 282 horsepower, and it could push the car to 230 kilometers per hour. This engine was first used in a souped up version of the DB4 called the Vantage, starting in March 1962. But it became standard in the DB5 when it came out in September 1963. The Aston Martin DB5 came with a bunch of cool stuff as standard. Inside, you'd find comfy seats that could lean back, soft carpets made of wool, windows you could open and close with a button, and two fuel tanks for extra range. The wheels were shiny chrome wires, and there was even an oil cooler to keep things running smoothly. The body of the car was made using a special technique called Super Ligera, with a shiny magnesium alloy exterior. Inside, it was all luxury, with leather seats and even a fire extinguisher just in case. All DB5s had two doors and room for two people in the front and two in the back. At first, it came with a four-speed manual gearbox, but later they switched to a stronger ZF five-speed box, you could also get it with a three-speed automatic transmission if you prefer. But right before the DB6 came out, they changed the automatic option to a different type made by Borg Warner. The Aston Martin DB5 is famous worldwide, largely thanks to its starring role in the 1964 film Goldfinger, where special effects expert John Steers customized it for James Bond. But when Goldfinger rolled around, the producers wanted to stay true to the Aston Martin theme from the book. The DB5, the latest offering from Aston, caught their eye. With its stylish Italian design and powerful 4.0-liter straight-six engine boasting 278 metric horsepower, the DB5 perfectly embodied Bond's sophistication and strength. It was the ideal match, handsome, proud, and commanding. The four-wheeled counterpart to Bond himself. The only hiccup? Aston Martin wasn't initially interested. The back and forth discussions between the movie makers and Aston Martin ended with Aston agreeing to provide a car for the Goldfinger movie, but at full price. Even though other car brands like Jaguar were considered, the filmmakers were set on having an Aston Martin. They persisted until Aston Martin finally gave in. They agreed to lend a prototype DB5 to the film crew, but only if it was returned after filming. In Goldfinger, there were a total of four DB5s used. Two were for filming, and two were for promotional purposes. The first filming car, known as DP21611, was the original prototype and was equipped with all the cool gadgets. It was painted Dubonnet red and had previously appeared in an episode of The Saint. After Goldfinger, Aston Martin removed its weaponry and sold it. Later, it was fitted with new weapons and appeared in the Cannonball Run movie. Unfortunately, it was stolen in 1997 and hasn't been found since. The second filming car, DB51486R, was used for driving scenes and didn't have any gadgets initially. However, after filming, gadgets were added for promotional events. This car featured pop-out gun barrels, a bullet shield, and a rotating licensi plate. It was sold in 2010 for a massive $4.6 million. 
As for the promotional cars, one is now part of the Lumen Museum in The Hague, while the other was auctioned in 2019 for an impressive $6.4 million. These cars, especially the ones used in filming, have become iconic symbols of both the Bond franchise and Aston Martin's legacy, capturing the imagination of car enthusiasts and movie buffs alike. After its appearance in Goldfinger, the DB5 became synonymous with James Bond. The same car, registered as BMT 216A, made a comeback in the next Bond film, Thunderball, solidifying its status as the ultimate Bond vehicle. Subsequent Bond movies continued to feature the DB5, reaffirming its iconic status. In the 1995 film GoldenEye, a different DB5, registered as BMT 214A, made an appearance as Bond's personal car, although this time without any gadgets. It did, however, boast a champagne cooler and fax machine. Another DB5, registered as 56526, appeared in Casino Royale 2006, this time belonging to the villain, Alex Dimitrios. Bond wins this car in a card game, marking another memorable moment for the iconic vehicle. The GoldenEye DB5, one of the iconic James Bond cars, found its place in the London Film Museum in Covent Garden for fans to admire. Out of the three cars used during filming, each had its own story. One of them, DB5 2187R, was filmed for a stationary shot by the ocean. Another, DB5 1885R, was showcased in a thrilling chase scene against a Ferrari in Monte Carlo. This car was sold at an auction in 2001 for a record-breaking price, earning a spot in the Guinness Book of Records for the highest price paid for a piece of Bond memorabilia. The third car, bearing chassis number DB5 1484R, was kept by the movie production company Eon Productions. It continued to make appearances in subsequent Bond films, carrying on its legacy in the franchise. In the 23rd Bond film Skyfall, another Silver Birch DB5 with the original registration BMT 216A took center stage. Coinciding with the 50th anniversary of the first Bond film release, this car met its demise in the film's climactic finale. Two cars were utilized during filming, one of which was DB5-1484R from GoldenEye, while the other was DB5-2007R. The DB5 made a comeback in the film Spectre, 2015, first seen in Q's underground workshop undergoing reconstruction, and then fully restored by the film's end, with Bond driving it away. In 2019, Aston Martin announced that the DB5 would feature in the upcoming Bond film, No Time to Die, set for release in October 2021. However, instead of using existing vehicles, the plan was to create replicas. Eight fake DB5 stunt cars were made for the movie. One of them was used in an exciting fast chase scene at the beginning of the film. It was sold for a huge $32.9 million at a charity event in London in 2022. This added more excitement to the story of the DB5 car. The legacy of the DB5 extends beyond just the road. It has been immortalized in various promotional items over the years. Corgi Toys kicked off their relationship with the Bond franchise by producing a model of the DB5, which became the top-selling toy of 1964. Airfix followed suit with a detailed plastic kit of the James Bond DB5, while the Danbury Mint released a highly detailed die-cast model with working features in 2006. In 2011, Partwork magazine publisher G.E. Fabri introduced a massive 1.8 scale model that built up over 85 weeks, complete with working gadgets and lights. Hot Wheels Elite also got in on the action, releasing their cult classics Goldfinger Aston Martin DB5 in various scales. Lego joined the party in 2018 with their impressive 1.8 scale construction set of the DB5, featuring front machine guns, a hidden telephone, an ejector seat, a bullet shield, and more. The set received rave reviews and became a must-have for LEGO and Bond fans alike. In 2022, LEGO announced another DB5 set as part of their Speed Champions range, promising more excitement for enthusiasts. For those who want to experience the thrill of driving a DB5 but on a smaller scale, the little car company partnered with Aston Martin Lagonda to create two-thirds scale electric-powered replicas of the DB5 convertible, the DB5 Vantage, and the No Time to Die DB5. These meticulously crafted replicas 
priced between 41,000 euros and 10,000 euros, offer enthusiasts a unique opportunity to own a piece of automotive history in a more accessible form. Built using 3D scans of the original, these replicas capture the essence of the iconic DB5 in a compact package, making them perfect for collectors and enthusiasts alike. In 1964, the movie Goldfinger came out with Sean Connery as James Bond and the famous Aston Martin DB5. It had exciting car scenes that the earlier movies didn't have. Bond chased after Goldfinger's Rolls Royce and sneaked into his secret place. The DB5 became famous forever in just a short 110 minutes. Since then, we've seen many cool cars in Bond movies, but none have been as memorable as the DB5. It keeps making a comeback in the Bond series, reminding us of its amazing debut. What's your favorite James Bond movie and which car from the series do you think steals the spotlight? Let us know in the comment below and don't forget to subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to stay in touch.